Good afternoon. My name is Nakayama. Thank you for coming. Well, right after the lunch time, I believe you are sort of sleepy, but I would like you to take 40 minutes for a decision. So this time in this forum, and thank you for coming. I have been the moderator many times, and every time we have such big names. Here we have another big name from Malaysia. This is a great honor, Mr. Tony Fernandez. Mr. Fernandez, well, well, today he has a red cap. Well, I don't have to explain. He represents Air Asia LCC, and he's the top. In 2001, he established this company. In October, uh, he, has, he wrote this book, Flying High. Well, within this week, I read this book. Well, he wrote this book starting from his birth and also his studies in the United in England and also in Malaysia. Well, he acquired this air line company for 27 yen to start Air Asia. And right now he has 130 destinations in the network. Today, uh, we have Mr. Fernandez. Well, 30 minutes ago we met and we made friends immediately. He's so friendly. Today, I am looking forward to hearing a lot from him. First of all, we'd like to take about 10 minutes first to hear from Tony about Air Asia, its business right now. And after that, we'd like to take about 30 minutes for the discussion. So please start. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much to Nikkei for inviting me. I'll give you a quick 10 minutes on um, our story. Actually, my background, I had no knowledge about airlines. I came from the music business. I was very involved in Japanese music from Akina Nakamuri to Makihara to X Japan. Actually, AirAsia X, I was thinking of the name for AirAsia X, and on my table was X Japan CD. So that's where AirAsia X name came from, uh, X Japan. Uh, that's the true story. So I was in the music business for 13 years, and then I had the idea of setting up uh, AirAsia in 2001, no money, no experience, but you only live once. Don't try, you don't know. Actually, I see my new friends from Aches over there. I have to apologize because today I'm wearing Adidas shoes, but from now on, I will only wear Aches shoes. So that was me um, 17 years ago, a lot thinner, with uh, a lot more hair. That was December the 8th, 2001, that we took over AirAsia with two planes and 200 staff. Uh, it, we, we signed the deal on September the 9th, uh, 2001, three days before 9-11. So, you know, that was kind of welcome to the airline industry. Always, always problems. <clears throat> that was the old AirAsia. It had two planes. It was blue, it had a bird on its tail, like most airlines have some animals, uh, tigers, lions, lots of birds. Uh, a lot of airlines are now named after fruit, like peach. But we decided to uh, drop the bird and call ourselves AirAsia and uh, put it red. So that was, that's the new AirAsia. So it's amazing what color can do. If you think about brands, there are generally two logos. Um, you have a symbol and you have a name. But we had no money, so we decided just to use our name as the brand. We dropped the bird and focused on our name and changed the color. If you think of the biggest brands in the world, there's only one image in your mind. If I say Apple, you're thinking of the Apple logo. If I say Coca-Cola, you're thinking of the Coca-Cola. So we decided, since we had not much money, that we would drop the bird and focus on our name as the brand. 
Over the last 17 years, we've started many airlines, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia. Then we started a new company, AirAsia X, which flies to Japan a lot. AirAsia Philippines, AirAsia India, and uh, the one I'm most proud about, AirAsia Japan, which a few days ago, we had uh, one year, our first anniversary, one year in Japan. Over the last uh, 17 years, we've had phenomenal growth. We started with two planes. We now have 250 aircraft. First year, we carried uh, 200,000 passengers. This year, we'll carry 90 million passengers. We're now the fourth largest airline in Asia, only the Chinese airlines, um, Air China, China Eastern, and China Southern are bigger than us, uh, but they have an advantage of 1.3 billion people. And we've won the world's best low-cost airline nine times in a row. So what's our secret? It's really people. We have 20,000 staff. We have no unions. It's a very flat structure. We don't dress up. I don't have an office. We just have a desk. Uh, it's, it's, it's really a family company, and that's caused us to have a very powerful weapon, which is our people. The energy in AirAsia is phenomenal. And we've been through so many problems. We've had all kinds of uh, weather issues. We've had uh, financial crises, oil price at $150. But we've always found a way. We've always found a way uh, to grow. And it's really down to our people, strong marketing as well. I'll tell you a funny story. During um, SARS, the avian flu, no one wanted to fly. And I told my staff, triple our advertising now. And they all thought I was crazy. Why would you spend more money when most airlines are cutting and no one wants to fly? I, thought it, I said it was a great time to build our brand because no one else was advertising. So you'd only see AirAsia ads. Plus, I knew Malaysians very well. If you put a fare low enough, they will risk their lives. OK, 800 ringgit to KK, I'm not going to fly. 80 ringgit, who cares? We will fly. So we always found a way to go through the problems. And over the last 17 years, we've developed people like no other way. Uh, Coogan over there used to carry bags for us. Now he's a pilot. We really, our, our strength is to turn raw diamonds into diamonds. Many people in Malaysia were very smart, but didn't have money for further education. So we allow anyone to uh, be the best in our company. Celia was just an airport executive in Macau Airport. She's now the CEO of uh, Greater China. And we have hundreds of examples. Uh, over here, uh, we had a Miss Thailand flying for us. She was a stewardess. She came up to me and said, I want to be a pilot. I said, go for it. She was super smart, and she got top marks in Malaysian Flying Academy, in Thai Flying Academy. And now, uh, and she became a pilot. She then asked me, can I take part in Miss Thailand? I said, sure. If you win, I use your photograph for the rest of your life for free. She won Miss Thailand, and she came fifth in Miss Universe. So we're the only airline in the world with a Miss Thailand flying for them. Even Singapore Airlines can't beat that. Okay. And we've had hundreds and hundreds of examples of promoting people where they never had a chance of moving up. LCC, our model is not about taking other people's market share. It's about growing the market. It's about reducing the fare and allowing more people to fly. It's no different from Uniqlo. And our whole ambition is to create new destinations, new markets, and new flyers. We want to bring new people to Japan, such as Sapporo. There was never a flight between Kuala Lumpur and Sapporo. Uh, we started it. We're about to start a flight from Kuala Lumpur to Nagoya. And I must thank, if he's here, we have fantastic partners in Nagoya Airport. They've been the best airport I have ever worked with. Uh, the CEO, Tomozo-san, is probably the best CEO ever in an airport company. And I wish there were more like him. Uh, so our model is reduce the fare, start new destinations, grow the market, and create more jobs through that process. Bandung, no one flew to Bandung, ever. And we started flying there. We were the only airline flying to Bandung. It was an empty airport. And today, we have 32 flights to Bandung, and there are 15 airlines flying to Bandung, and they rebuilt it. 
We'd like to do that in Japan. There are many airports that are empty or not utilized. Um, we think Sendai is a great airport, for example. We can do so much more in Sendai. <coughs> and most importantly, this is a very stressful business, so we always like to have fun. This was my first boss, Richard Branson, who lost a bet to me, and so he had to be a stewardess on AirAsia. I always say to everyone, believe the unbelievable, dare to dream, and never take no for an answer. We are really enjoying Japan. We really love what we're doing in Nagoya, in AirAsia Japan. We've started one route, Nagoya Sapporo, and already we've grown the market by 20%. We can do a lot more with a lot of support, and we love your country. I love your country so much that I moved here as well. I have an apartment now in Roppongi, and we hope to do very much more. Thank you for listening. I'm on time, 10 minutes, like my airline. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tony-san. Uh, I call you Tony-san. OK. Um, OK, first, uh, yes, I didn't know the story of X. <laughs> X. Yeah, the story of X is so interesting. And yeah, I have read this book. At first, uh, I'd like to ask you about why, why now? Why you, did you publish now uh, this book? Oh, why did I do the book? Yeah. Someone paid me a lot of money. <laughs> so so um, the money goes to charity. We have a foundation. Um, called AirAsia Foundation, uh, where generally we've helped a lot of, our, our, our mission is to, to do social entrepreneurship. We don't like to just write a check. Mm -hmm. We like people to help themselves. Mm -hmm. So during many of the disasters from the tsunami in Aceh to uh, Tag Bilaran, and now recently in Indonesia, in Palau, we try and help people restart their lives. And so Penguin Books had been asking me for a long time to write mm -hmm. a book, and I, I wasn't so keen. And when they offered me a lot of money, which goes to our foundation, I said, OK. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This book is also uh, good for uh, easy to understand uh, about your story and uh, your way of thinking and your, uh, your uh, way of management. And so. Um, I think uh, you are, yeah, uh, you are one of the most successful uh, businessmen uh, in the old airline industry, right? And in Japan, uh, from 1990s, uh, we had we have we have had uh, so many uh, new airlines, LCCs, uh, but all of, almost all of them are uh, acquired or bankrupted. Mm. So, which is the difference between failure and success? Okay, um, I'm looking at my CEO. She's very scared how I answer this. <laughs> Otherwise, she'll have to go and see the government. Uh, I think the, the number one is uh, focus. I think airlines have a tendency to try to do too much. In 17 years, AirAsia has basically been the small, same, same model. When we thought of AirAsia X, mm -hmm. we, didn't, we didn't put the wide body into AirAsia. We started a new company. So we have been narrow body, short haul, one class. We sell food. We give people a choice. Basically the same model for 17 years. So focus is very important. If you look at a full service airline, mm -hmm. um, they have four classes. First class, business class. Now some airlines have premium economy and economy. That's four business models in one, one plane, which is very tough. And then they also have Wide body, narrow body, some have turboprop. And so um, I think our success has been down to focus, uh, very good people. I think people is really important, and very strong marketing, mm -hmm. and a big emphasis on digital. And of course, an environment that wanted change. So the Malaysian government under Tun Mahate, who is here today, and is a big friend, friend of Japan, he gave me the blessing to start this airline. He wanted change in Malaysia. He didn't just want Malaysian Airlines. He wanted others uh, to try and give people a choice. And so he was very supportive. And the regulators, the Malaysian DCA, was very supportive in helping us change our model. And that's how we grew very fast. So two things. I think um, 
we were very focused on the business model. And two, we were in an environment in Southeast Asia, firstly Malaysia, then Thailand, then Indonesia, then Philippines, that wanted people to have a choice, not just one or two airlines. Mm -hmm. They wanted competition. They wanted us to open new. Many of them had built. There were many airports in Malaysia that were empty. No more. AirAsia is flying. Many people now have a choice uh, to go direct to many destinations. So I think the regulatory environment was also part of the success and part of the reason that Japan has only got one or two airlines. History of Japan, actually, if you look at it, there's only been two airline groups, really, JAL and ANA. So I think we were lucky in Southeast Asia that our governments wanted more competition, wanted a different model, wanted more change. Mm -hmm. So you learned from the Southeast, Southeast uh, Airlines and the Lion Airlines, so EasyJet, so something like that. Yeah, I'm, my experience, I mean, it's a, you know, I decided to leave the music business. Mm -hmm. I was in New York. Uh, we had just merged with AOL, and I thought it was a crazy merger. I was sitting in Rockefeller Plaza in New York, and I was listening to the new owners, and I thought they were crazy. And um, I made my career in one second, actually. The, the boss of AOL said, Tony, what do you reckon our stock price should be in a year's time? In my heart, I was listening. I was saying, listening to you, it will collapse. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't say that. So I said $90. And he went, wrong boy, $500. Mm -hmm. At that point, my famous mouth opened, which Jenny gets very scared. And I said, please give me some of the drugs you are taking. And I knew at that point my career was over. So I resigned. Mm -hmm. I got paid. I left from New York to London. I was sitting in a bar. And I saw EasyJet on TV. Mm -hmm. So I just went to the airport. And I thought, what an amazing model. People were flying to Barcelona for eight pounds, to Paris for six pounds. And I thought, I want to bring that to Asia. Now, there's a very fine line between brilliance and stupidity. It's really narrow. Okay. But you know, I was 36. You only live once. If I failed, I go be an accountant. <laughs> um, but you got to try. I didn't want to sit there at 55 and say, I wish I did it. Because you can't press the rewind button. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd try. If I fail, I fail. But at least I try. Let me get back to an uh, easy question. Uh, so I heard that you have an um, apartment in Nopongi, yep. Tokyo. And also you have a uh, Passmo card of uh, Tokyo Metro and the Suica card of Japan Railroad, right? So how often do you uh, visit Tokyo? Do you well, I, stay in Tokyo? <laughs> well, probably too much for the Japanese staff. But I, I love it here. You have an amazing country. And uh, me and my wife really love living here. Um, we're also very determined to make AirAsia Japan work. You can't really understand or build a business until you live in a country. So it was a big decision for me to move from Malaysia to Tokyo. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but by living here, you know, going to the nightclubs, going to bars, playing golf, using the Suicha card, you begin to understand Japanese people mm -hmm. much better. Mm -hmm. uh, using Honest Bee, going to the supermarket at 2 o'clock in the morning, and you still see so many people there. Mm -hmm. You understand that Japanese actually don't sleep very much. Um, from 8 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock at night, they're very serious people. And then after 8 o'clock at night, you become crazy people and can drink till 3 in the morning and still go to work at 7 o'clock. I really respect <laughs> you. <laughs> so. Um, I'm in really enjoying it here. I mean, Roppongi obviously is a nice area to live in. Mm -hmm. um, and Mr. Mori is a great landlord. <laughs> but uh, I'm enjoying it here. But I think I couldn't really build a business until I lived here and really understand the amazing country you are in. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, you began uh, the business in Japan uh, in 2012, right? Correct. And uh, that was. Uh, at the uh, Narita Airport, right? So alliance between uh, ANA Holdings and Air Asia uh, was cancelled, and after that, uh, you uh, created, you founded Basis in Chubu, Kuko, yes. yes, Nagoya. And uh, I'd like to ask you uh, a bit more about your, your future plan uh, about the uh, 
Japanese uh, sure. you know, Yeah, we, business. obviously our first experience was with ANA. That was a tough, nothing wrong, just we, we had different cultures. And then uh, with my friend, uh, Mikitani-san, and other, some of his friends uh, in Roppongi, actually, we decided to start AirAsia Japan. Uh, we, as a board, uh, decided not to go to the conventional airports of Tokyo and Osaka, but we thought, why not try Nagoya? Everyone said Nagoya was tough, um, no one really wants to fly there, et cetera, et cetera. But we thought, what an amazing place. There are millions of people there. There's fantastic tourism potential. And, and so our job is about creating new things. And then we met the management, Brito-san and Tomozo-san at Nagoya, and we thought, what fantastic partners. So of course it's hard. It's much harder to start Nagoya than it is to do Osaka or Tokyo. But the prize is much bigger. And then we had fantastic partners in Nagoya Airport who are also building us a low-cost terminal. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to start there. And the rest of the airlines are also starting to fly there. We're, we just launched Nagoya, Bangkok, and we're starting in about a month's time. And the load factor is fantastic. And we're going to do Kuala Lumpur, Nagoya as well to supplement what we are doing um, between uh, Nagoya and Sapporo and other destinations. So our plans are very big, mm -hmm. but it depends on the regulators to allow us to, to grow uh, quickly. But we believe we're going to create more jobs, more tourism in Nagoya. So people in Malaysia had never really heard of Nagoya. Mm -hmm. Now they're all beginning to hear about Nagoya. And we bring people from all over Asia. So even Australians come to KL, change their flights, and we'll go to Nagoya. And uh, we're going to start flights from different parts of Asia. We want to do uh, Nagoya to Phuket very soon, and Nagoya to Bali. So we're going to really open up Nagoya mm -hmm. tremendously. Mm -hmm. And very soon, we have a very successful Osaka-Hawaii flight. We will also do Nagoya-Hawaii as well. So we've got great partners in Nagoya. We want to expand our 320 operation and fly from lots of places to Nagoya, and also potentially open other airports such as Sendai, uh, Okinawa, et cetera. So we're ambitious. As, as long as the regulators support us, we will grow as quick as we can. Mm -hmm. I think also for us, we see many young people who want to be pilots, and they don't have opportunities. Uh, in our office, we have two two boys and one girl who actually have qualified for pilots but can't get a job. Um, so we're looking to start uh, programs for students to become pilots. And also for people who have qualified as pilots who can't get jobs, we're moving them to Malaysia, to Philippines, so they can get experience and get their flying licenses and then come back to, to Tokyo. Our first, our first boy, who's a fantastic guy, he was a Japan Airlines scholar, he is now going to the Philippines. He was a bit nervous at first, mm -hmm. um, but I kind of forced him mm -hmm. and with Jenny, and now he's on his way to the Philippines, so we will make his dream come true. So our mission in Japan is not just about tourists and growing, but it's also about creating jobs and giving people a chance mm -hmm. to, to, do their, to live their dreams. In terms of uh, the route uh, beyond Japan, I, I heard that uh, you are pre preparing for uh, a route from Nagoya to uh, United States, North America, or, I don't know, uh, Europe, or... Yeah, yes. we would like... Uh, Japan is amazingly positioned. It's 12 hours between Europe and 12 hours to the west mm -hmm. coast of America. So we have bought the A330 NEO, and uh, at, at the right point, uh, we would like to do more into Europe and, and Japan, and, sorry, and US. But also, while we are waiting for approval, we will use Fifth Freedom where we can for Malaysia, AirAsia, and Thailand, AirAsia X, and Indonesia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'd like to make sure once more uh, about uh, uh, the importance of Japan. How, how do you feel about that? Uh, how, yeah. I think Japan is, yeah. I, I, my, my son is 18 years old. He would like to be Japanese, he, <laughs> you know. Uh, he wants to come to university here. He will always come with me when I'm here in Japan. Uh, Japan is the center of Asian culture. 
And uh, whatever, whatever anyone says about Korea, and my wife is Korean, mm -hmm. so I can say this quite confidently, Korea copies the Japanese. The Jap culture of, of, of Southeast Asia and Asia is Japanese. Japan started J-pop. Mm -hmm. K-pop came after J-pop. Mm -hmm. um, the designers, the art, the movies, all, all Japanese. So everyone wants to come to Japan, but it's expensive to come to <laughs> Japan. <laughs> Um, you know, ANA and JAL is not so cheap. AirAsia is. Uh, so we want to we want to allow more people to come and uh, to to Japan, and also for Japanese to travel. Young Japanese and even older Japanese like to travel. Uh, so our plan is a very important market for us. So important that I moved here. I don't think you can have more commitment than that. That I've actually moved here to Tokyo to show our commitment. Mm -hmm. So it's a very big part of our plan. OK, thank you. And it's a, it's a dream of mine. You know, I grew up watching Ultraman and having Nissan cars and watching the 240Z in uh, the Grand Prix mm -hmm. and uh, you know, listening to Sadao Watanabe and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all these great musicians, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's a fantastic dream to be here. And I was selling Japanese music from Akina Nakamori to ex-Japan and mm -hmm. Makihara. To suddenly be involved in building a Japanese airline is a, is a dream for me, because mm -hmm. this is an amazing country. Mm -hmm. So you like very much uh, music, right? Yeah, so music is a very big part put, of my uh, life. You put BGMs here, right, uh, in the book? Sorry? Uh, you put BGMs uh, for every chapter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I put the uh, songs I love First, to... First, uh, yeah, Georgia and, uh, and yeah, many. <laughs> yeah, I, I, have, ten, I have 8,000 CDs now. And uh, but a whole lot of digital music. Mm -hmm. uh, music is a very big part of my my life, and will always be. If you come into an AirAsia plane, our music is definitely better mm -hmm. than any other airline, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and most of our staff can sing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. Your success story is a very great story. I think, and uh, you are now connecting the more than 130 cities in the world. And, uh, but some say that the traffic of the LCC uh, industry is beginning to decline, uh, decrease, or I don't know, uh, saturate uh, in the North America and Europe. Mm. How about in well, Asia? I think we've, Asia. Just, we've just started in Asia. You know, when I started in Malaysia, only 6% of Malaysians flew. Mm. Now I think, you know, the official number is 62%. Anyone can fly. We have made it so affordable. Um, so we have three billion people in Asia. If you think about most of that traffic is going to big airports. There are very few flights, direct flights, mm -hmm. from secondary cities and tertiary cities. Uh, we're about making flying democratic, mm -hmm. allowing everyone to fly from anywhere. So we think there's a huge amount of growth still, not just for AirAsia, for all the airlines. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, you can't, in Europe, you can take a train mm -hmm. from one place to another. You can drive. You can also do that in America, you know, provided Donald Trump allows you to do it. But you can go from one end to another. In Asia, you can't. Mm -hmm. It's either a plane, or if you're crazy, a ship. You know, no one's gonna take a boat from Kuala Lumpur to Jakarta, unless you're really mad. Mm -hmm. So I think flying is, is really important, and I think provided we can bring the price down and we have great partners like Nagoya Airport, then I think um, there's still a lot of growth. Europe mm -hmm. and, and uh, America is quite saturated now, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of growth for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, our uh, next question is, um, yes, uh, trying first. Uh, Try first is your slogan, I think. Yeah, uh, your uh, symbolize your principle, your way of management, uh, managing company, right? And uh, yes, it's. I think it's like a very Silicon Valley style or European or American. And uh, but uh, for for Japan, on the other hand, we Japanese uh, are not good at trying first. <laughs> so, uh, do you have? Any advice for us oh, wow. to, to do so? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I see Rakuten, you know, my partner, Miki, he has a, a, a more similar culture to us. There's no right or wrong. 
there is no right or wrong. Japan is super successful in this model. But I think sometimes it takes a long time to make decisions here. And I think that holds back Japan sometimes. And it, it's what I always say to my staff. Sometimes you analyze, analyze, analyze. It's, you almost get paralyzed. <laughs> you know, it's paralysis by analysis. When I did Bandung, I just did it. There was no statistics to say, oh, there's a market. But for me, it's very simple. There was five million people there. Mm. At Nagoya, all the statistics say, don't do it. But there is a huge population. It's the heartland of Japanese industry with Toyota, mm -hmm. et cetera. So we did it. So I think um, I do subscribe. It's not always right. Mm -hmm. I have got some major disasters in my life. But I think it's better to try and mitigate the risk sometimes mm -hmm. than not do anything. Mm -hmm. I think companies <coughs> who are too scared to make a decision will be left behind. And history is littered with that. BlackBerry was so strong. Mm -hmm. you know, who can believe? Nokia, so strong. They have disappeared because they didn't innovate fast mm -hmm. enough. I told my staff now, when we started, we were only competing with Malaysian Airlines and Singapore and Thai. That was easy. Mm -hmm. We were able to grow very fast because they were very slow. But now we are competing against digital companies who are very fast, very quick and thinking, and if we don't adapt, we won't be there. So um, trying change management, being agile, um, not worried about failure. So I tell my staff, try a project. If it doesn't work, cancel it. Ego is a big problem. People don't like to admit they're wrong, and so they don't try. That's For me, I don't care. If I make a mistake, mm -hmm. I make a mistake. I've had, as I said, some disasters. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd rather my staff try, if, even if they fail, close it down, move on to a next thing, mm -hmm. then stand still. A company that stands still will eventually die. Mm -hmm. I heard that the organizations of the uh, Air Asia is so uh, open, flat, or diversified. Yeah, so mm -hmm. Could you explain about that? Yeah, we're very, it, it's central to my, my whole thinking. We have a, a very flat structure. Um, you know, we, we don't have offices. I think offices can be a big problem in that it creates a lot of politics. Everyone says they have an open door, but then the door is always closed. So I knocked down all our offices. One day I just came in and I, I just knocked them down with a contractor. And we've been open plan. We want to be transparent. Uh, we dress down. Today I dressed up for Nikkei. Um, he asked me if I had a tie, which I didn't. Um, Normally, I'm just a t-shirt and jeans. Because if you dress up sometimes, you put a distance between yourself and your staff. When you look worse than your staff, mm -hmm. then they feel very comfortable to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And some of the best ideas from my company have come from boys who are carrying bags or girls who check in. So we want to have 20,000 brains working for us, not 10. Many Asian companies, it's the top management that decides everything and the rest are implementers. Mm -hmm. I want to use everyone's brain. Mm -hmm. I have 20,000 staff, that's a huge energy. So we allow everybody to come up with ideas. Mm -hmm. No one is afraid of asking me. Mm -hmm. People regularly tell me I'm wrong. The, the, the two people sitting in front always criticize me um, <laughs> <laughs> and say, shut up, don't say this, don't do that. I'm their boss and I can fire them, uh, but they make sense. So i rather have a culture where everyone can give ideas, no mm -hmm. one is afraid to say anything, than um, a culture which is really just run from the top. We're bottom-up management. And mm -hmm. that allows anyone to live their dreams. And some of my best staff have left school when they were 13. They were able to do, you know. And, you know, we, we allow people to, to do great things. I mean, June Ider over here has, is doing a fantastic deal with Aches. We just allow people to, to open their minds and, mm -hmm. and do anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next question is about uh, globalism. Yes, uh, there has been a lot of uh, change in geopolitic, geopolitics right, uh, right now, and uh, it is difficult for us to say we live in an uh, uh, in a, in a age of globalism, right? 
Uh, how do you feel about it? Do you find it diff uh, difficult to uh, execute your global uh, yeah. business right now? I, I'm a globalist. I'm a multilateralism man. I believe in free trade and open, openness. I hate protection. I think um, level playing fields are the right way. I think it's dangerous. We're going into a, a world where there's more nationalism, there's more closing of the borders, um, and that is is worrying, you know. Uh, but and even for AirAsia, when we started, it's hard for a Malaysian company to go outside of your own country. It was easier for an American company to come to Thailand mm -hmm. than it was for a Malaysian to go to Thailand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, I do believe in ASEAN. I do believe in multilateralism, and I think we must continue to fight that. I don't agree with anything Donald Trump is saying. Uh, you know, the only thing I agree with him is that he has a red cap, which he copied from me, and uh, he appears on The Apprentice, which I also do The Apprentice, mm -hmm. but I'm much nicer than him. Uh, so I think it's important that the world continues to have open dialogue and trade and be uh, global in nature and uh, bring down the protectionist uh, wars. History has shown, even the European Union, where the, the United Kingdom wants to pull away mm -hmm. from the European Union. If you look at trade, the people of Great Britain benefited tremendously. What has got caught up is immigration and the European Court of Justice. But really, from trade, everyone benefits. Mm -hmm. Everyone's from a free trade. Yes, there will be some losers. Mm -hmm. Some companies will go out, but history has always shown that people will benefit from free trade and multilateralism and trade pacts. So I hope this will not be something that will be long. Mm -hmm. It will affect the economy. But no doubt 2019 will be much harder mm -hmm. through all these uh, trade sanctions, etc. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm confident that we will bounce back because there are too many connected supply chains, too, many, too much globalism has already happened for this to take severe mm -hmm. long-term damage. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, time is almost uh, up. And my last question is, uh, yeah. could you tell us about your future? Uh, your friend, your close friend, uh, Mr. Richard Branson, is going to go uh, to the visit moon? moon. Yes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> what, 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 where is your final destination? My final destination, yeah. Rapongi, um, in a bar. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm, yeah, Richard Branson is my good friend, and he asked me to go to space with him. And I said, why? Why do you want to go to space? What are you going to do when you get to the moon? There's nothing there. At least I go to Rapongi, I can listen to music <laughs> and have a beer. So my, I don't know what my final destination is, but I, I'm very excited about transforming AirAsia into a digital company. Uh, I would love to end up doing education and create a low-cost education, and I'd love to create a low-cost hospital. I think two basic human rights are education and health, and I think there's too much of a gap between the state and private. So once I finish with AirAsia, which I, I will retire at some point, I think too many leaders stay too long, and an organization must refresh leadership. And when I go, I'll definitely go far away, I'd like to look at education and health, and um, maybe I'll retire in, in Tokyo with my Switcher card and fly on AirAsia only, mm -hmm. not any other airline. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, interesting story. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Tony Fernandez, thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tony Fernandez. So thank you very much, Mr. Tony Fernandez and Mr. Nakayama. So now we would like to prepare for the next session. If you'd be kind enough to wait a few more minutes, please. Thank you.